The Voice. I heard The Voice the other day. I can't watch The Voice at night. I watch it on off YouTube topic it again. Gets me excited. Why? Because it's like all these people get up there and you worry about their hopes and dreams and that they get up there and act. You, I worry. You worry. Yes. About because, Joe Bob's hopes and dreams. Yes. Because a lot of these people get up there and they're really good singers. But some of them are not. And they embarrass themselves <laughs> on, a, them. <laughs> on a national stage. And the one that I watched was they had all the judges in chairs and they're facing oh, the opposite God. direction. Yeah. And then they hit the button and yeah. they spin around. What's that, that? That's the that, voice. Yeah, like, that's, that's the, the whole point of the show. Why? You just hear their voice. You're just supposed to listen. So it's like you whip around and yeah. like, like some it's sort like of James I Bond like villain. you yes. to like, face oh, you, I don't, I don't care what you look like because if you're like going to be gorgeous and beautiful, I like my being, I'm a little forgiving because you're going to be hot. And uh, people are going to like listen to your, watch your videos and stuff anyway. So that, yeah, basically. Yeah. I wonder who thought so that. So like, I could get on the voice. If you got on the voice, what would you say? Moon River, wider than a mile. I'm I don't know something that. in Some, style yeah, someday. His, his, his short term. What know. would you I sing? I, don't, I wouldn't sing at all. You can't, I can't sing. What are you going to do? I've never I'm not seen going this. What are you voice. doing on the voice if you can't sing? I didn't say I was Get going off on the this voice. show. <laughs> Welcome to the Board Game Snobs Podcast. Critically harsh reviews with a touch of class. Go. Did you? Were we recording? Uh-uh. Okay. Just kidding. Yeah, we were. Oh, that's what I thought. That's <laughs> gotcha. what I thought. Yeah, gotcha. I thought you pulled one over okay. on me. Follow us on Twitter. No, don't follow Nobody us on Twitter. Nobody cares. Nor the Facebook. Don't follow us. You we know what? We do don't have good us. Instagram pictures. Um, we're... I of me, enjoyed, obviously. Yes. Enrique, you haven't posted nothing in a while. I have, I've, I've been laying off the IG for a while. <laughs> he, he doesn't like pictures in general. I took to Twitter... Too much proof. <laughs> yeah, I took to Twitter and started looking at some of the other industry media board game people on Twitter. Oh, yeah? There's something about going on Twitter that makes you lose your mind. I'm pretty oh, sure. yeah. It's, like it's, you like, get a- it's just a bunch of hate. It's yes. Like- it, there's this intense feeling of, I'm a nice person, but when I get to Twitter, I'm all of a sudden, I can talk about whatever I want. Express yourself. And express myself in such dramatic and strong ways. And I like Like, people. I feel confident to I say like, this on the internet. I like that, but I don't want to do that. Does that make sense? Like, I don't want to get on there and post anything. I just watch. I'm the guy that when the fight's occurring, I'm holding my cell phone vertically, filming it, yelling. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. World star. World star. Go ahead. <laughs> because, All the cops are coming. I'm that guy. Jerry, if you were to actually say anything actually on stuff. Twitter, you would, like, probably cause World War Three. somehow. Yeah, so I'm, He's an right. antagonizer. I, I, I am an he antagonist. He likes to get on Facebook and Twitter and just like throw a little something out there that incites things. Hey, I man. ask questions. And then watch the world burn. I ask questions. <laughs> what kind of questions do you ask? I just, I don't, just, just to feel people out. How, how do you feel about that? No, you, you, you do it because you get to learn something about them. I do like seeing how my fellow man reacts in different situations. <laughs> I would say, like, I wonder what would happen if like this happened. Would he seems like he's having a good day. What would he do if I said this about his good day? <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you truly feel? Uh, I think that technically makes me a troll. Yes, you uh, are very much a troll. Yeah, yeah. Uh, troll hunter. Um, I feel like that. Once you know that about yourself, that you're a person that can easily antagonize other people, you do one of two things. You go the route of restraining your powers, <laughs> like you use them for good. I have the power. Or you just go ahead with what's deep down part of your personality and just start fights. <laughs> ah, that's you. And next thing you know, you're on more and you're yelling, you, cash me out back. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing you know, it's, it's all. Cash me outside. That's you know? it. the cash me outside oh, guy. Uh, I want to read some fan mail. What's all bad baby Yay. been up to anyway? I want to read some fan mail. Uh, you know, we have new fan mail? Yeah, people send us stuff. And I like that people send us stuff. Uh, just because I'm Gobby. Yeah, that's Gobby. That's Jerry, and I'm Enrique. Yes, this okay. was a terrible intro because you didn't do our normal intro. What are, what's our normal? Changing intro? it up. The, I don't like change. I'm Did very you structured. Know that the delegates who attended the Constitutional Convention spent much of their time getting drunk. 
what website you read it off of. <laughs> is it is that important? Oh no! So why 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 are you, are you trying you, to? I mean, oh oh! So now we need it to be a factual website. No, yes, was, yes. One surviving document is a bill for a party on September fifteenth, seventeen eighty seven, two days before the signing of the Constitution. Items on the bill were fifty four bottles of what does that say? Madeira is oh, that a drink? Yeah, sixty bottles of claret, mm, nice. eight bottles of whiskey. Eight bottles of cider, twelve bottles of beer, and seven bowls of alcoholic punch. All of this for fifty-five people. Wow! This is off of uh, all that's interesting dot com. Nice. Thanks for plugging them. Hey. I'm all about plugging other people. Hey, uh, I forgot what I was about to say. Just you now. have a one in two hundred chance of being related to who? Who? Kevin Bacon. No. Well, that's true. That also. <laughs> no, you may have been. Uh, uh, Literally everybody I've ever known okay. has, has, has growing up in Oklahoma, everybody over the age of fifty five claims to be related to Jesse James. Okay, no, everybody. not him. I think worldwide. Worldwide. Oh, oh, that's Genghis Khan. There you go. Yeah, Genghis <laughs> Khan. Yeah. So literally every birth, every <laughs> day yeah. is Genghis, Genghis Khan's Khan. to, you know, oh, descendant of his birth. That, yeah. uh, that's that's disturbing to think about what that required on his part. No. This is uh, Genghis Khan. He no. took over a bunch of stuff. No, just, yeah, he took over. He took over. In and, a bad way. And he just had a bunch of, he had an entourage. A he wasn't married entourage. happily to no, all those women. Happily. No, no. He's He's a, history he weird. was a bad guy. Genghis like, really Khan? really a bad, bad, bad guy. Hmm. I mean, have you ever noticed, uh, talked about Genghis Khan in a good way? I mean, like, he was a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Everything he did was like pretty terrible, no, right? Actually, if you'll do a little further digging, no, Genghis all Khan. All I need to know is Genghis Khan. I might be related to you. No, no, no. Dude, you are granddaddy Genghis Khan. Oh God, Genghis Khan killed so many people that he actually lowered carbon emissions. <laughs> so in a way, <laughs> Genghis Khan was the first environmentalist. He was trying to keep us. He was trying to help. <laughs> I read that somewhere once. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, I've made several statements here that apparently I did not research and are not factual. Oh my god! So let me recant. You're so wrong about so many things. If you're getting your news from me, re- I don't know why. I don't know what your problem is. So I think a few podcasts ago, I incorrectly declared that Richard Borg had died. Richard Borg is not dead. That oh I know my, of. That was wrong too. Richard Berg is dead. Richard oh, Berg great. is a slightly lesser known <laughs> designer. But one of our fans like oh my sent God. a message saying, Did you say Richard Borg dead? I was yes. like, Yeah, it's Richard Berg. Richard Berg died. I don't know how I got that wrong. Also, uh, you also were wrong when I said India parallel. It is India. You said Indian. You were also wrong oh, about yeah. all the games that Vladimir Suchi. Yeah, that was Emerson much. Machia, March, Machiano. Stop. Stop. Don't even try. He, Just say you were wrong. I was wrong. My name is Jerry, and I want this on record. You are wrong. If you're getting your news from me, you are wrong by proxy. You shouldn't be listening to me. It's probably 65%. Six, I, I agree with that. I don't do this podcast to be factually right. Don't listen to this podcast for facts. I do this <laughs> podcast to speak. Now, if you wanted facts, speak. I'm... Probably like once in a while, look up something. And you just, don't like, know what you're talking about. You? All right. Uh, fan mail. Forgot. Giuseppe wrote us. Says, hey, Jerry, Gabby. Speaking of Star Trek, playing underwater Sydney's reminds me of the great. Sydney's? Sydney's. <laughs> underwater Sydney's. Sydney Sydney yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love Sydney Portier. <laughs> Call me Mr. Tibbs. <laughs> you ever watch Sneakers? I did. He that was, was great. Like, that was my favorite movie when Dan I was growing Aykroyd up. Dan Aykroyd is one of my Body. favorite actors. Dan Body. Aykroyd. I really love Dan Aykroyd. No, I've never liked Dan Aykroyd. Why not? <laughs> you just have heard burp. <laughs> no, no, I was like yawning. He's yawning. Trying. Enrique's over there <laughs> yawning. He's over here yawning. He does <laughs> making noises. What do you mean? I'm trying to do talk about... I, I'm looking... Uh, up over here and trying to like I can't yawning like a baby bird yearning for food (laughs) he can't look All right, Enrique has some malformations of his nasal passages he can't sneeze he has to bring his mucus down through his oral pharynx which means he has to suck on his oil you know stop don't ever say all those words together it's gross You're getting don't back. Ever, oh. no, I, wait a minute. Oh, you don't like Dan Aykroyd? No. Why not? 
he's not funny to me. Oh, Dan Aykroyd and Steve Martin. You remember they used to do. On you know Saturday when he was Pie? funny? The, 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 the guys from uh, Too from Wild and Crazy, crazy Guys. Crazy. Okay, I you know who was funniest one. in that though? What? Steve Martin. Well, it doesn't matter. I, Dan Aykroyd was okay in Driving Miss Daisy. All right, look. You're just gonna have to Ghostbusters, not funny. You're gonna have to I'm Bill gonna, Murray was funny. The Blues Brothers. Blues Brothers, not funny. Did Jim it? Belushi was funny. Okay, so look. He is a sidekick to people that are funny. Dan Aykroyd, I don't like. I don't know why I'm being so I'm talking about that right now, but he's just <laughs> I just don't like him. Board game snobs I don't at like gmail.com. All those that would defend Dan Aykroyd, feel free to write gobby. Dan Aykroyd, no. Can I get back? Where were you at? To underwater cities. Underwater Sydney. Giuseppe Go. says, reminded me of the greatest Trek ripoff show ever. Sequest DSV starring, starring Roy Schneider. I like Roy Schneider. Schneider or Scheider? Is it Scheider? Oh, Schneider. Read very closely. Scheider. What does Giuseppe say? He says Scheider. Okay. I thought that's what it was. When I play underwater cities, I imagine Captain Captain Brigham caption? defending my sea nation. I caption from it hostiles. myself. I put it on sea mute nations. and then caption it myself. <laughs> He's the guy. Look. I make up my own dialogue to well, the show. As soon as we start this podcast, you know I have a speech impediment. I have to enunciate things very slowly. Speaking of enunciation, uh-huh. I was watching DS9. This goes along with what Giuseppe was saying. This is not Sequest. No, DS9. I know what kind of gets me about some of those Star Trek shows is they over Captain Cisco, Commander Cisco, whatever he is. I'm yeah. watching series, episode one. That he's he Commander. over enunciates. Yes, he does. But he likes to make sure you understand him. It's good. I, I don't like how he's always mad. No, he's pretty like, upset. Even Picard was a little bit laid back. Oh yeah. But yeah. He was mad at Picard because Picard was bored. Like I just watched episode one of DS9 right. and he was like all upset because Picard How was Dare you get a similar Locutus? Was yeah, that his Locutus. name? Yeah, he was all upset. That's the worst his wife Borg died. name ever. The Locutus? Yeah, like why would they pick that name? I don't know. How did they would the Borg go like, through this kind and of like locus? what what name? Like, I don't know. I've never even heard that name before. Are you yawning? Yes. Okay. Um Go ahead with Giuseppe's Thanks, email. Thanks, Giuseppe. <clears throat> what did he say? He said that he's a huge fan of Deep Space Nine and Underwater Cities. DS9 is uh, his no, favorite. No, DSV. D- Sequest DSV with yes, Rorschach. DS9 is his favorite Trek show. I, 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 okay. Okay. I mean, you know, you got the original series and Next Generation. Oliver from Austria, which I want to go visit. I had the chance to go to Austria one time. I didn't take did it. Did I, mate? No, Austria. <laughs> Austria. Austria, yes, that Austria, of, yes. of bodybuilding and strudel I'm and about. mountains and the isn't that where uh, Fiddler on the Roof? Is that what I'm thinking? That musical was. I don't know. Anyways, he I sent us a musical. picture of strudel. He says strudel is typically an often sweet layered pastry that is filled with apple strudel, a distant Austria. Oh, Ooh. wow! Oh, the game mechanism about the emperor visiting your hotel shows the habit of Austrians have to be on the good side with the government and the monarchy. So you would want to take special care of him and handle his wishes. Oh, that's what we was talking about on a uh, one of our favorite games now. What? Grand Austria Hotel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good game. It's a good game. Today, we want to talk about a game that is not one of our favorite games. Genties. By GMT Games and by Mr. Stephen, how you say his name? Rattus? Rest, wrist House? <laughs> Can't ever say names. Rattus. Why do you always have me say these designers' names? Because you're the one that likes to talk and you act like you're doing the show and you I say am the everything that is wrong. No, you are not. I am the host. You say everything I am the wrong. Nexus you say the wrong name. Board you say game the wrong. snob. I, he, the he rest does of you whatever. are just barnacles. What on the great hole of the sun on which we surround? Technically, we're, we're the support of. <laughs> hey, hey, we're, thank we're like you a, no, 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 no. Okay, no, Enrique. Enrique. We are you a pyramid. No. Jerry's up top. It is a pyramid. We are the support. Enrique, but you are so wrong. No, no, no. But if we would, did you know he's mic? done? He's oh, done because he mic. speaks in ignorance and he doesn't know what he's talking about. Enrique, Enrique, I am. I respect you. Hey, and I understand what you you're know, saying. I am a host. I hear you. You know what? And I understand you. Who's, who's and I acknowledge you. Just literally, the term host. Whose home are we in? 
Just because we're at your place. Whose room are you in? This is our room. Who you bought told these me today, mics? This is our oh, room. Who bought these mics? No. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Why? Who's mixer? Hey, look. look. It's computer. Look. Doesn't yeah. matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Who's talent? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. If we want to get every fact wrong, let's cut to Jerry. Look, look. I didn't. Hey. I let's go not... to Stephen Radhouse that produced a well, game yeah. called Genitalia. <laughs> <laughs> it's Genties, by the way. Please keep it clean. Stephen We're a family Rist, podcast. Wrist House. Uh, this po- this Genties. Genties. By TMG and there's mm. a game brewer. There's a spill wakes. A lot of people on this, lot of people game. Make this game. So this game came out not too All right, wait, hold on. I'm going to turn Enrique back on, but Enrique. You watch your words. Hey, you should have... Hey, no, 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 snap. Uh, no, is. you're done it's now? now. You <laughs> done made me angry. So, in Genties... In Genties... Because you're wrong. Gentlemen, please Enrique. control yourself. We're trying to have a dignified discussion Jerry. about board games, please. <laughs> Jerry, control Excuse yourself. As I, as I sip my tequila. Mm. Oh, off to a great start. Oh, off to a great start. In Genties, it's built as a civilization game. Bilked. Built, yes, as in like people say that it is. I believe the designer is the same guy who made Arc Works, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> which is a very which I probably Arc am. right. Oh yeah, that's what I said. Arc right. Arc Works. Whatever. Literally nothing you say is right. Look, look at here. Look here, Bobby. I'm trying to I'm trying to get through this the best that I can. It's been a hard Everything day. Everything you say is wrong. So. With on Genties, this is one thing I'm not wrong about. I don't like Genties, and we don't even know how to pronounce it. I, I think it's Genties. Whatever, whatever. So in Genties, which several of our fans had warned us, is not a great game. Gobby doesn't listen Civilization to our game. fans because he's not like me. He's not a man of the people. Whatever. You play this game. It, oh, it has an interesting mechanism. So let me describe this mechanism that you have. You have this player board, and on the top is like this time track. And as you do certain actions, you have to take these hourglasses and place them along this track. So it severely limits the actions that you can take. But you can kind of stave off and do more actions by doubling up on this time track. by putting, Double up. Ugh. By putting two hourglasses on one spot. Which means that next round, you'll have less actions. But for right now, you can do more actions. So it just depends. There's this fascinating little thing that you do of deciding how much time you want to spend on developing your culture. You really don't have resources. You have workers. There's six types of workers. And the thing that kind of kind of lose kind of lost me on this game was that you have this track at the bottom of your player board where you have uh, your military men and your scholars and your merchants and your tradesmen and so forth, and these tracks conflict with one another. Like you can only have so many of one type of worker before you have to reduce the amount of those workers, of the other workers. Like you can only have so many military people until you start taking away. Well, you could run one all the way up to six, but then your other player would be at zero. Right. Like you can have... Or you could meet and do three and three. This game simulates to where you could have a bunch of military, but you'll lose tradesmen, if I'm not mistaken. Or you could have a bunch of... of, uh, Military, uh, yeah. Scholars and whatnot. So, So you really have to decide what kind of culture that you're building. And basically, these workers are your resources that you use to play cards out of your hand and the cards just represent certain buildings or upgrades or just inventions that your culture makes and it's like set collection in the way you're scoring points as you're playing these cards out and going around buying cards cards into your hand playing them to your tableau back and forth gentis was interesting to learn it was different it's 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 quite different in comparison to other games i have played I have never lost interest in a game so fast, though. Uh, I was actually more interested in trying to figure out what made this game bottom out to me so quickly. Learning it and watching the playthroughs and reading the rule book, I was actually kind of excited to play it. I think that it's so abstract, and there's just elements of it that I don't like. The scoring being based mainly on this set collection aspect uh, of these buildings that you can make and utilizing your workers as base the resources rather 
Uh, it, it's just not. Well, I, just, you, I you, can't put my finger on why I don't like this game. I wish I could. Well, I played it. Uh, me and you played it. Then I played it like a bunch of times solo, trying to trying to see it. And I, I didn't mind it, but it's very limited solo. So your different tracks, you can uh, buy new cards from a display. And those new cards will give you monuments in which you can build. And you build those monuments with the players, the uh, people that you're talking about. You can train and educate your people. And that's going to be an action. So you buy that. You got to build up your people. And they're different things. Like you said, military, there's philosophers, construction, blah, blah, blah. Depending on what you build up, then you can purchase those cards build the cards that you have in your hand, but you have to purchase those cards first. Then there's like this uh, area control, but not really because you just go oh, there and it gives you stuff the on the map. You can get money. You can get <clears throat> these cubes that you can also use to head to. There's a, like a world or not a world map, but it's a, it's a map this of area life. of the world of whatever that is. It's, it's like, Essentially, what, what Egypt with this map, Greece, you build and place cities out onto this map. But there's a little side portion of it to where you, you what was it called? <clears throat> City, not towns. There's, it's like country it's and the city. capital cities or something of that yeah. nature. That instead of building major cities out onto the board, you can go to this portion of the board and build cities and activate and get activate certain bonuses and whatnot. <clears throat> I think that was the worst part of the game to me. Because the rules tend to flow really nicely until you got to that portion of the game. Matter yes. of fact, I'm not going to say who it was, but there was a uh, one of the guys that does a playthrough for this game. When he got to that rule, he made the point of saying, all right, this is like the hardest part of the game to understand. And so let's go over it very thoroughly. He proceeds to explain it very clearly. But I realized that this was a speed bump in the game. And to quote, I uh, can't remember, I to quote somebody. One of the designers that worked with um, Matt Leacock talked about how Matt Leacock, would, uh, who is the designer of Pandemic, please check that to make sure I'm not wrong, uh, how he designed games and how he would play test them. And one of the things that he would do is that he would watch people play his games, and when they would have a question regarding the rules, he would say, just do what you think is right. Do what you think is comfortable. What's the most intuitive way of playing this game and that's how he kind of figured out how people's brains work in connection with board games there's certain rules that just make sense when you're playing a board game mm -hmm. this game in genties it has some rules that really don't make a lot of sense there's a portion of the board that seems like it was just tacked on and really, that that portion of the game to me is just irritating. The it, northwestern sector of the board. <laughs> it's just it's it, it was part. I remember telling after we played it the first time, I told Gabby, I said, if this part of the game was gone, I think this would still this would be a decent game. They should have taken the upgrade training your workers part, and then using those workers to buy cards, and then play the monuments, and then they should have used something else with that instead of this area control part. Because that's where it was boring to me. Yeah, it get, a part of the game felt disconnected, and it felt very boring. It's like you're you're enjoying this mild. I was playing. I was playing the whole part of just upgrading workers and playing cards, and Jerry was like, "You're just doing that one thing." I'm like, "Well, that's that's easy because the other part is kind of confusing." I still not. There's like digital. What did you call it? The digital virtual. Virtual virtual actions you can do on oh. that one section. Oh yes, that, that's that's kind of confusing. Oh, that, that's another thing. That, that's another thing that I hate when a game does. Where you see this in some games, where the designer will decide, okay, this is the main action that you take throughout the game, and then they'll very wisely have some bonus actions that don't affect anybody else at the board that you can take at any time. Uh, there are a lot of good games that do this. There are some very poorly designed games that will have a main action. Where you you know, always place your worker out here and do the action, but in this case, instead of placing your worker, you can do this or you can do this and take this action and, and round. It, it, it's like a different way of playing the game is tacked onto it. Genties does something like that, where and the main action of the game is taking a tile from the board, placing it onto your player board, filling up your time track. Unless you're doing one of these virtual actions, 
where yeah. you don't take a tile, you just take the time track. The time. And, and there's and oh, but you can modify this action if you go up here and take a cube that you had previously placed on the city hall area and blah, well, and it just it it, it snowballed. I we, tried. I played this game. This is not a great game. I tried. I played this game five times solo, in which you're just trying to run up your score. You only have so many turns that you can do. And in those turns, literally, there's only so many things. I don't know how you could... I don't know how to improve my score. Because if you focus on one area to get even these bonus points, you're not going to do very well. You have to diversify somewhat. And I just... It, it's it's a frustrating game. I see a lot of potential there. I like yes. the play... I, I like games that give you a personal player board in which you're able to improve things. I like that aspect of it. I like the uh, the philosopher part of it. I think that's where you take the thing and you upgrade your uh, comp- your workers. Mm-hmm. You train your workers. And then the cards in which you and you called it almost splendor like in that you just get <laughs> I need uh two philosophers and a war man, a warrior and then I can play this card, which yep. I understand that. And as a as a to clarify, anytime I get mad at a game at some point in time, I call it Splendor Like. That's like a running gag that I have. Uh, if you've ever listened to this podcast for any amount of time, you know that I have a deep, intense hatred for a certain game called Splendor. And it's just simply because I don't like games that are activities. Uh, they're games that were the ultimate or the best. Speaking of games, uh, completely unreal. What about. Par- for words, please. I saw it today. Attack him, Enrique. Get after him. There's hey, a, hey. There's a game <laughs> called Detective Club. Detective you seen Club. That? Yes, I have. I'm interested. And it's to me, it's very reminiscent of the what was the game? Spy, mm-hmm. where like you're all in the same location, but yeah. one person. Mm-hmm. But the Detective Club is like that. But then you announce the word that you're going for and you're supposed to identify these cards that you have played. You've blindly played two cards and then you're supposed to match the word that they said. So like if they said fluffy, this was the, I think the one off of dice tower, like you say fluffy, you play these two cards that relate to the word fluffy. So then you say, okay, everyone played cards related to fluffy. I may have played something, a metal bar. I don't know. I don't know what's in the game, but I can see you like, okay, now how am I going to make this bar fluffy? (laughs) I'm I sorry. Think I'm you say that again. No idea what you're talking about. This is about. the fluffiest bar. I don't understand. <clears throat> okay, so like, in, what's the is the name of that game? Spy. Yes, it's Spy that you're thinking. That's the about. name of the I'm game. I'm pretty sure. But then I'm again, sure that's I wrong. have messed you're up wrong. everything that I've said in this podcast so far. <laughs> okay, so I'm not even going to go into it. But it looks but, good. But it looks fun. It's a party game, though. Oh, it looks I hate fun. Party games. No, you don't. You love them. I do not. You don't know. You me. like playing like mafia? When... I do like mafia. Everyone loves Mafia. What's the game, Enrique? We played it one time at your uh, sister's house. All right. You deal out all these cards. It's it's like from a couple years ago. And right. everyone knows the location you're in except the spy. Oh, you're talking so about then you're spy like, fall. So then you're like, Spyfall, oh. yes. Why didn't you oh. just ask? I was, I oh. did. Oh, this podcast oh. is brought to you by Una Por Favor. Is that this tequila that I got? Una Por Favor. This is good uh, cheap tequila. I got the recipe. Uno, por favor. Yeah, one. F- Reposado original. Reposado is that it's, it's not rested. Res, it's not res. Posado. It's, it's reposado. But it's rested. No, there's no resting. I know. There's no, no R. That's what that means. Are you sure? Positive. Look it up. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that means. They rest it in no. barrels and let it gain uh, flavor. I trust me. Don't trust me. I you. like tequila. This says. Sipping tequila. The first Native Americans to help the pilgrims named Samoset and Tisquantum. Yes. Squanto. Yes. Could both speak English before having met the settlers. That's weird. You How know, did they know English does without that bother having you, met the settlers? Does that bother you, Giuseppe, that when you're watching Star Trek, that everybody speaks English? <laughs> it's weird. It messes have, with me. It's, it's, it's like Doctor Who. 
I they don't just like have that. these. That really messes with me. They, they have they these translators, the and everybody can speak English. English is the language of the universe. <laughs> it's like that's the basic galactic. <laughs> like they do the same thing on Star Wars. Everybody, yes. like, how does Han know what Chewie's saying? Chewie's well, just not growling. everybody. I'm just, <laughs> stop that! You sound, oh, like, yeah. you sound like a quail. What factor one? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make that any quail. sense. That doesn't make any sense. That's a plot <laughs> hole there. <laughs> Oh, oh. Yeah, well, Jabba had that one guy that translated for him, the guy that sat on his shoulder mm-hmm. and just yacked. Uh, the Twi'lek? No, that's not a Twi'lek. You Salacious think- Crumb? No. The one that just laughed? Nah. <laughs> no, that's not a Twi'lek. That's the green lady with the long... They're the same. No, they're not. No, they're not. You're about to start the, a fight. What? Well, then what Make was me. he? Are you talking about the guy that was sitting there by Boba uh, J- uh, Jabba? Oh, I'm sorry. You're talking about the... I thought you were talking about the little rat thing. No. Like well, that's you Salacious Crumb. I'm sorry. No, he's not a Twi'lek. But you were talking about the one whispering into Jabba's ear. That guy might be a Twi'lek. He's a Twi'lek. I yeah. don't know. Twi'lek. But no, that, that little rat thing? That's a. That's, that's, a, yeah, uh, that's, that's an Enrique. Yeah, there is a, <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> sitting on Jerry's shoulder. I can see it now. Translate for me. Yes, I just repeat everything he says, and it works basically. out fine. It no, works it out doesn't. Fine. It's one against two. Uh, so often, Gentees is not any good. Gentees is it's not not good. good. Um, I tried it solo. It's frustrating solo. I don't. It's it's a sucky solo too. Can we talk about companies now for a moment? What Go types ahead. of companies? So, like TMG. GE coming at you. I remember when years ago, walking into a board game shop, just getting back into board gaming, and it was a friendly local game shop, even though it wasn't local, but it was very friendly. Uh, at Madness Hello down there. in Madness uh, ga- Games Mandis. down there. Madness. When we often go to Me. Madness. Yes, I love Madness down Mandis. in Plano, Texas. And I remember the lady helping me and said, that she loved TMG games. Like any game that was a TMG game, she loved it. Tasty Minstrel. What does that even mean? Uh, it's, I think it's a pun off of, uh, off of um, uh, the Holy Grail, Monty Python. Oh. Tasty Minstrels, if I'm not mistaken. Because okay. they had to eat their minstrels. What is a minstrel? I it's thought that was a plays, person. It does. It plays the music. They you know, ate them. They ate them. Mm, they were cannibals. They had to eat the minstrels. They think that's funny? Do not. This may, I may be making all of this up, so please do not think that's the case. You watch a live. You tell me if you think cannibalism is funny. Uh, is that the song with Ave Maria at the beginning? Alive with Ethan Hawke? No, that's the song. It's not a song. It's the movie about the soccer team with that Ethan crashed Hawk in the Andes. In was, was he in that one? I'm pretty sure Ethan Hawke was in that. Really? I think he was. And they start off with singing Ave Maria. That song, you know that song? Go, go ahead. I almost hit that Let's note go. almost right. That song. When I drink tequila, I can All hit that I note. Is that when I watched that movie, I was scarred. I didn't watch it. I just it's caught the... It's very disturbing. I just remember reading I about it. I watched it because my parents were in Chile. 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 It, when that not happened. Not Chili's. Not the 20s for 20s. They were, <laughs> they were down. They were they down, down on an awesome America. blossom. Down and South I heard America. about this soccer team. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> and I just remember hearing about that. My parents remembered that. And I was like, huh, let me watch this movie. And they're like, oh, they crashed. Oh, they're hungry. Oh, Bob died. <laughs> well, let's eat him. It was dark. It cool. went dark real quick. Yeah. But it also presents this, like, you know, philosophical question about what to do to survive. How far, mor- I guess not philosophical, morale, morality, morale. Mm hmm. Stuff that's far beyond my scope. <laughs> we like, have no what morals would you, here. What would you do to survive? Well, yeah. obviously, Enrique goes first. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> oh, no. I'm we'll, gonna he'll be alive still. No. We'll be cutting off pieces of him. No, like, I, Enrique, I, I, do you no, need that I'll arm? I'll be alive. You don't yeah. need that Enrique left arm. Enrique eats you know Cheetos how times, and chicken nuggets and has one kidney. I'm pretty sure he'll survive. Five days without eating once. He'll survive. You went five days without eating once? Without, actually, no, no, no. I went five days without eating actually eating <clears throat> anything except bread. Oh, wait. Well, that's just carbohydrates. Exactly. It was a Uruguayan exactly. Air Force Flight 571 that crashed into the Andes Mountains on October 13th, 1972. So actually, my parents were they had just gotten here in America. They got here in 1971. Mm-hmm. But they were very familiar with all that. 
Interesting. The budget was thirty-two million. Box office thirty-six million. This has nothing to do with GT <laughs> games. You've <laughs> railroaded me. You were talking about eating people. Okay. Tasty minstrel. Tasty minstrel. So, can you buy a game based only on the board game company itself? Can you say this person uh, makes Stone Miner great game games? Says yes. Okay. No. That's why I want to bring this up. Did I just go right into your, where you wanted to go? I gotcha. <laughs> uh, Stonemire Games has a lot of followers. And not only just followers, people who love Stonemire Games. Well, I used to be one of them. I know. And so I'm glad you rehabbed out of that, even though you just spent 100 bucks on Tapestry. No, I spent $89. Plus shipping. No, no. It oh. was 89 from their website, from oh, Stonemire nice. Games, that's it was seventy nine nice. oh. plus ten dollars shipping. Is this a, is it was eighty nine dollars. Is this a commercial? I saved myself ten bucks. Is this bucks. a commercial? Go to Stonemire.com. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> Please give Jamie more money. So I wonder, I'm going to look up Jamie Stegmaier's net worth. He does. He's oh, not. He, he doesn't he's, register. He's not, he's not a celebrity. You know what's crazy is in our world, people are celebrities, right? All right. I'm Jamie a celebrity. Stegmaier. We got like. Two, three hundred people <laughs> listen to us. <laughs> There's three celebrities in this room. Uh, right two now. celebrities in this room right yeah, now. Know us. Yeah, We're too. famous. No, but seriously. I like, barely walk down the road without the, somebody saying, hey. If you were to see, dare I say it? Jamie. Jamie Stegmeyer. Mm -hmm. If you were to see, you saw uh, Paul Who? from Shut Up and Sit Down. Oh, yeah, Paul. You were mm. very excited to see him. I was him. very excited to see Paul. Literally, he could walk down the road and nobody else would know Me who he was. Me and Paul Here are in America, of the especially. same stature. Here in America, especially. I'm pretty sure I could take him in a fight. If you were to see Tom Vassell. Who? <laughs> Who? <laughs> don't deny him. I don't know who you're he talking exists. about. Exists. Who are you Tom talking about? Vassal of the he Dice may Tower. He exist, but that doesn't mean we I have to pay attention. To this Dice Tower. So <laughs> you, in the board game world, yes. he is a celebrity. Uh, I don't know. There are people Maybe. that are simply celebrities. Simply, Now, yes. what their opinions are and the games they like, you may completely disagree with. True. But you have to admit that that person is well known mm -hmm. in the board gaming world. And when you see them, you're like, oh, yeah. No, I don't, dude. I don't yeah. fanboy over anybody. I don't care. You fanboyed over Paul when you saw him. Uh, because you got real like, excited because you had their shirt on your body. I was wearing body, a shirt and you're like, uh, oh that said, I saw Paul. shut up and sit down. Yes. And, we and all I was us. one of the first fans of shut up and sit down. Oh, one of the first fans. When they were on Vimo. No. And so I had to see him in America and to look across the room and realize that Paul. Then your eyes met. We met <laughs> and he waved lock? at me. I remember him waving oh. very, very strangely at me and I walked up to him. And it didn't help that it was at midnight and he was trying to check into the motel and I harassed him and then I awkwardly hugged him. Yes, yeah, that, that, awkwardly yeah, hugged that sounds Paul like Dean. a little bit fanboyish to be honest. Okay, yeah. so all right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm, I, I, yeah. Hey, I've never been to a Justin Bieber concert either. Looking at you, Enrique. You know, nope. you, you went to yes, Justin I, Bieber, yes, Enrique? Yes, he, nope. yes, he does. Enrique. He has a poster in Don't. his room. You have a poster of he Justin does. Bieber. He's a Bieber. Are you a believer? I would burn that thing. Yeah. It's like, oh, why would you burn, burn that? that? He's, burn that thing. You would burn that along with Star Trek Conflict. Yes. I you have found he, a cell. It would be the kindling in which he burns. I think he does. He protests too much. <laughs> no, no, no. Have you even found a seller for that? Oh, no. No, it's good. A buyer? Just, a I, seller? A buyer. I meant buyer. I know what I he's, said. He's and just, I feel he's ashamed. Just, no, it's, you can feel ashamed because you like Justin Bieber and you know it. Stop. It's okay. Baby, baby, baby. Uh, TMG. TMG used to make some really good games that I like. And as I look across our shelves of TMG games, we own not only GTs. Which we do not like. Don't care for. Gates of Loyang, which I think Gates is Loyang, wonderful. Amazing. Amazing game. Ponzi scheme. Ponzi scheme, which is a game that is very niche. I like it. It's a money game. Very niche. -y. Gold West, one of our favorite or games. Niche. Crusaders, which is not about the Crusades. Uh, and you can pass <laughs> but it. But it's up. interesting. It's okay. No. It's okay. Yokohama, one of my Amazing. favorite games. So as you can see, they go from like extreme highs to extreme lows. Extreme highs to extreme lows. Used to, if it was Fantasy Flight, I bought it immediately. Really? The past two games that I have bought from Fantasy Flight or what? have played Star Star Wars Outer Rim, mm. a dud, mm -hmm. and Guilds of London. We liked it when we played it. You may not like it now, but you liked it when you played. That was it. TMG. It's past. 
uh, Discoveries was Fantasy Flight. One of the oh worst games God. made within Never the past it. two or three years. Terrible game. Terrible game. Terrible. And, and so there's very few companies that I've found that have been particularly just consistent in what they put out. Uh, one that I think if I had to pick, strangely enough, we have a lot of Simon games. Come on. That we really like. And they're not games that I would kind of feel like that would be up our alley. Z-Man has a lot of hits with us. Z-Man. As does the coveted Osprey games. Osprey. So I wanted to kind of hard merge that over towards Enrique. Because me and Enrique played a game that has been on my list okay. for right. a while now. I haven't played it with Gobby, so of course it can't be board games. Undaunted. Undaunted Normandy. Called it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Undaunted Normandy. Number one, I love the artwork. Number two, Osprey Games. This is not the game we were going to talk about. No, it's not. I, but I'm, I'm, right, I'm fine. taking over fine. this. this, fine. this right, whatever. Turn, turn his mic on. Turn his mic on. Oh, okay. oh God. Go ahead. Oh yeah. Uh, that thing wait, wait. Osprey. Wait, wait. Better wait. Okay. There you go. There go. Osprey Whoa. Games sound makes some one. of our sound favorite check. games for well, some we reason. We do sound checks during the podcast. That's okay. Hey, we're it's professionals. Fine. Yeah. The artwork's great. I'm going to turn my mic off. It's a deck builder. Could you fill me back up? Please stop. No. no, stop. no you don't need more. It's a deck builder. Okay. I do you want to stay on? Hey, do, stay you want to on. St- do you want yes. your mic to stay on? Deck yes. builders. Jerry does best when he's had a little bit of something. You know he, he gets... No. I hate See, deck building. I love deck building. Though. Enrique loves deck wrong. building. Because I love his, Enrique, I bought this game. It was so I good. It yeah. There. It, and that bottle is empty. When he Thanks. bought this game, he also didn't bottle. think he was going to like it. But then we started playing it, and then he actually enjoyed it. I love this game. <laughs> this is not so. Wow, th- true love. Even though we put, <laughs> what are you doing, Princess Bride? <laughs> Do you know that they're about to remake that? They're what? wanting to really? wanting heard, to remake. I that. heard influential oh, people are wanting to remake. Okay, and Wait. everybody is against it. Nobody should remake. No, that. no. I like that. How old. can you best those people? You can. And Carry Airways and Andre the Giant and <laughs> Inconceivable. <laughs> Who's going to do that? I'll do it. I like no. that Robert no, Zemeckis. You're not big enough. Robert Zemeckis with Back to the Future retained his rights. So he they, said, "Heck no, they never." Not he said, "Not it. as long as he's alive." Yes, which is beautiful. That's which beautiful. Is beautiful. That's what they should do. You should listen in, George Lucas. God forbid we have a <laughs> fresh idea. No. They're re- okay, they're rebooting BSG. They're going to say, "Oh, well, it's not a reboot. We're going to do it in the same universe." They're rebooting uh, Safe by the Bell. Okay, B- with Zach Morris. I love Zach Morris. Yeah, I love Slider. Uh. I love Kelly Kapowski. <laughs> what? What's so funny? I love those guys. I grew up on Saved I by know, the Bell. I know. Kelly Believe Kapowski it. had my heart. BSG. I'm sorry. You, you, you messed me up there. You cannot redo BSG without... I, you got to have Colonel Saltai in it. Uh, That's the guy. Adama. No. Adama was the heart and soul of that show. Colonel Ty was. Colonel Ty. No, he was. Oh, really he was a good character. The but difference I, is my flaws are personal. Yours are professional. That's Adama the was the Ty. heart and soul he of that show. He had his eyeball plucked out by a Cylon. You cannot. Adama cried. I don't care. Saul Ty didn't cry. Yes, he did. No, he did. He yes, he care. did. He drank and he fought. He got punched in the face by Starbuck. Oh, Starbuck. She was dead. That show messed me up. BSG was so messed up at towards the end. I they wish lost they, their way. They lost their way. It was that was that, it is still. It is still. Up until the, like the last three episodes. I know, but but still yet, I forgive them. I don't. It is my number one sci-fi show of all time. Is it? Really? Series? Yes. Of all time? That was, I binged that show. You binged it? I was getting the Netflix DVDs in the mail. Wow. I, and that was before it was whatever, you know, streaming. And I went through that sucker within like a month or so. I'm pretty sure my wife saw me cry when Gata died. <laughs> so just, that's not my uh, and I don't I don't even cry over anything. <laughs> but no, that was like sad. the one, like the only one that I really didn't care about was the engineer. 
Chief Tyrell. He was a very poor engineer. I didn't like him. Yeah, I did I not like, like him. him either. Didn't like his character. Didn't like where they went with but him. That's not his fault. Every That's other the character was spot uh, on. Adama was amazing. I, Edward James almost like anything he does. I'm like, the he, music. On the that music. Show. They like had the like drums. this Irish Gaelic music yes. that was like. Get my heart. I'm like, why am I crying I don't know, right but now? Why was it that like Apollo? Don't get me wrong. Your world has been destroyed, but like every other episode, he had his hair done by like he had a different hairstyle. Like oh, he was gorgeous. He was gorgeous. <laughs> Did you ever hear him? Speak? Jamie Bamber. Jamie Bamber is yes. like as British as all get oh, out. Yeah. He would. He, he put in a fine acting work. My there. favorite act. Okay, Katie Sackhoff. Yeah. I liked her at Starbuck. I, uh, she was amazing. Like only you, reason you she watched just, Longmire. Yes, the only reason I watched Longmire. Go ahead. Well, I kind of like Longmire there in the end, but I watched. I started Besides off watching it. Lou Diamond Phillips. <laughs> I started off La watching Bamba. it because of Katie Sackhoff. Go ahead. Although she's in this another show called Another Life that's really terrible. Never really watched terrible. it. Uh, 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 Caprica Six. Yeah. What's her name? Uh, you got, got, got her. her I've got her on, on my wall. wall. <laughs> I've got her on my wall. A sign. I don't know her real name right off the top of my head. Trisha Helfer. But Trisha Helfer Trisha signed Helfer. a picture of herself saying, Gobby, you're gorgeous. Yes, well, I may or may not have told her to say those words. <laughs> you pay 50 bucks. I pay 50 they bucks. They'll picture. put whatever they want. Go ahead. Uh, I liked her, Starbuck, and I like Edward James Olmos. I like Saul Ty. Yeah. And the, uh-huh. with those four, That's they it. drove that show to me. <sighs> yes, all the other characters... Added to it very like you gotta have Apollo, you gotta have uh, who else do you gotta? Oh, uh, the main guy, Baltar, he yeah, was really good, he was good, really good. I mean, just that, like, I, I get excited just talking about it. BSG was an amazing show, they the ending was ugh, the ending was ugh. so they could have went so many better places. But NBC is going to reboot. They're going to have this universal have streaming service, whatever. NBC. It's going to probably going to be terrible. But between that, Saved by the Bell, oh, Punky yeah. Booster, <laughs> they're rebooting it all. Oh, but bring just, Punky back. But do I've you been re- holding that poster over my head for a long time? Do you remember the first time we played Battlestar Galactica, the board game? Yes. yes. That was one of the greatest games we'd ever played. Yes. And so then it went terribly and wrong. And it went terribly wrong. And so we bought the base game of Battlestar Galactica, was basically one person ends up being a Cylon. Everybody else is co-opting to try to get the ship from point A to point B to survive. And, of course, when we first played it, I had to be my favorite character, Saul Ty, but I was also the Cylon. <laughs> During our first playthrough of this game, I managed to overthrow Gobby as the Admiral, and the president, and end up taking over the ship, running it out of fuel, and nobody thought that I was a Cylon. But I was a Cylon, too. No, you weren't. Yes, I was. You were? Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, you, were. I you was. showed your hand yes. real early. Yes. I remember. I ended up in the brig most of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up convincing everybody, selling Gobby down the yes. road, yes. nuking a... Uh, Little did you know, you were helping me win. Yes. And then at the very last, ran us out of fuel and yeah. won the game. That for was us. good. That was an example that was of an a good way. Amazing game. The second time we Sam played Rick, it, Enrique was the was Cylon. Bad. The <laughs> game got set up. We're not going to talk about that. We explained really no. the rules to everybody, and I looked over at Enrique and said, "Hey, are you a Cylon?" He gave me this look, and the game was over. <laughs> uh, it, uh, no, it flopped. The second game flopped, and I just remember being. Realizing that that game was, and we trudged through another two and a half hours of. Oh my god! Yes, it was terrible. Enrique is a terrible silo. Um, I realized that that game was great, but it wasn't great for our group. No. And so when people play that game, I see people, I see them enjoy it, and I realize this is a wonderful game. But for our particular group, we just don't own it. It's one of those games I'd play again. But just not with Enrique. Yeah. But yeah, that, because- that doesn't mean that there's a lot of games that I play particularly just with Enrique. And Undaunted Normandy, which I'm now hard merging back to my review oh, of, yeah. is a deck builder that I bought specifically and anticipated. It's only two player that I was going to play it with Enrique. And in Undaunted Normandy, it's a World War II themed game where one side is the Axis, one side is the Allies. You're moving your squad across the board in an area control action, playing cards from your hand. Like squad goals? Yeah. Hashtag squad goals? <laughs> Hashtag yeah, squad. Yeah! It's, it was great. I oh. really like this game. Really? Matter of fact... Even though we did play only the base version we of it. Play, yeah, we played the tutorial of it several so basic. times. 
Hashtag and then basic. it was still really Went good, through though. and added mm. the other stuff to it. You can play a campaign and add in your points at the end to see who really won. A couple won. more true, uh, like more advanced troopers, yes. like uh, mortar, mortars, uh, more sni- mortars, more mortars, snipers. Where's you can add, you add like mortars, like uh, making brick yeah. walls. Yeah, it's, it's great. This game is probably my favorite deck builder. Wow, I don't like deck That's building. Not saying though. much because it's don't not like saying much. I don't even, like deck building. And he had a little bit of dice rolling. Just a the dice bit. is the, the that is the combat in it, which is yeah. very simple. You just this is your cover rating. This is how much it takes to hit. You roll the dice. You might hit them. You might not. Yeah. The more powerful uh, the units is. roll more dice. That's yeah. it. Uh, very the, basic in that regard. The movement though, the, you prefer it over Star Realms. Star. Ooh, Ooh yes. Yeah. Enrique, yes. Enrique, Star Realms well, is your okay. game. So, so here's the thing with Star Realms and uh, the other one that I can't pronounce because I'm Undaunted. Not, yeah, Undaunted. Is that Star Realms is more of a, a, a it's an actual build, deck builder. You actually buy cards and then put them in your deck and then try to get rid of all the tra- trash cards. All right. But with uh, Undaunted? Undaunted. I can't. I don't know why I can't remember it. It's okay. It's we forgive you. It's an actual ta- tactical game because you have to buy certain troops to, ha- like scouts. We had scouts. Mm-hmm. Scouts were really important, even though there were only a couple, a few of them. They were basically our few. our movement to search new areas because we couldn't like uh, move move in with the with the soldiers, the rangers. The, the uh, rifleman, Texas rifleman. Rangers, baseball team. Yeah, basically. Got you. Walker. They they can't they can't just like enter go. a new area. It's like, oh look, an area. <laughs> I'm going to explore. Everything he just said is coaching. <laughs> it is correct. <laughs> the fact is about this game is that it is a deck builder, but after you take care of the deck building part, you have this very interesting light area control portion of the game. And there's some tactics to this game that aren't evident when you first play it. For instance, when you play a card, there are several options on that card of what you're going to do. For instance, Enrique took uh, great care to scout out areas and to cause diversions and things in my deck, which made me take fog cards, which are just cards that clog fog, fog, fog of war. Yeah, clog basically up my deck. Uh, ghost troops. Yeah, so he made me basically when it came my ghost turn, troops. Ghost yeah, troops, basically like Ghost Rider. Is that what they're called? No, no. It, no. He just made that up. He just made yeah. that up. That is awesome. It's like the sci-fi. Send thing. out our ghost troops. <laughs> <laughs> just, That's awesome. They got like <laughs> night vision on, shooting people in the fog. Or it could just be a, uh, like a company of Patrick Swayze's. <laughs> <laughs> we keep talking about ghosts. Oh, Dan Aykroyd's going to show up. No oh, god. Why would he show up? Is <laughs> he into ghosts? Ghostbusters. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. You'd know that. I wouldn't. So basically, Undaunted, uh, my favorite deck builder. I like it better than Star Realms, mainly because of the area control portion of it. If you are into deck building, which I know there's a lot of people HGTV. who like because deck, deck building, because deck building is amazing. Yeah, did she just make a joke about Are actual you? decks? Huh? What? Yes, you did. You Me? talked about you. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. Not a property undaunted, brother. Undaunted. Undaunted. We were, I'm undaunted in this conversation. Would we recommend? I, well, we would recommend it, but we haven't played with a gobby yet. I yeah. have not recommended it. So officially, BGS approved okay. since I am one of the primary hosts of this podcast. Secondary, no, it is not approved. Host. He's the colonel. Technically, you're both primaries. No, He's thank just, you. No, hey, can thank you, you Enrico. Both primary. You can't be you're a double primary, primary and a bi primary. There's a, a primary. Co-primary? There's a primary and there's Whether a secondary not, you put a and there's a tertiary. It's primary. No. We are one. That is enough of this We're podcast. We're a trinity of the BGS podcast. Just to make sure you understand. You want Jerry? Take my hand. Jinties. Together. Not any good. No, it's bad. Undaunted. I wouldn't say it's good. bad. It's just not good. It's mediocre. BGS board game snobs. We are not blown away by it. So not therefore, it is not approved. Yeah, it's it's not, not, not amazing. It's not, it's not great. great. We only like stuff that's great. Right. Undaunted it's, sounds great. It sounds great. I don't know. You need to play it. We'll have to look forward to, or I will look forward you to playing that. Look forward Someone, to I'll that. look forward Something to it look in the future. To. Uh, in the next to podcast the will be the Lorenzo expansion. Ah, El Magnifico, the age no. of Renaissance. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what that it's called. And cartographers, House of Renaissance. No, we need to talk about cartographers. It's a great, <sighs> okay, whatever thing. All right, Roland Wrights. Uh, I hate them. 
All right, whatever. Okay. Next time. Next podcast, Lorenzo at Magnifico. Send us an email, boardgamestobs at gmail.com. Give us five stars on iTunes, because we need that. That helps us realize that we're good. House of Renaissance and Cartographers. Thank you. Bye-bye. See Thank you for listening to the Board Game Snobs. Stay classy.